everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to be learning how to crochet the Changing Tides throw. Uh, now this is a throw that is made up in 12 different blocks. They're not perfectly square, they are rectangular blocks and it's made up of 12 of them. And uh, the main stitch pattern in this design is uh, sometimes referred to as the alpine stitch so it creates a lot of texture and um, it's worked using double crochet and front post double crochet stitches I'll show you just a corner of my finished blanket here you can see that texture really really coming through and then it has various uh, color changes the edging on this blanket, I've kept it fairly simple and straightforward simply because I wanted to really showcase the texture in these blocks. The finished blanket measures approximately 45 by 65 inches. Each block measures approximately 13 by 18 inches. And then you're going to have a little bit of space in between, of course, uh, when you join them together, as well as your edging adds a little bit as well. Uh, I've ranked it as an easy pattern simply because it's very repetitive. Once you get a hang of the pattern, uh, you're good to go. As far as the yarn is concerned, I used some Karen Simply Soft, which is classified as a worsted weight, medium weight, number four yarn. Now, if you are looking to switch it up with one of your favorites, I do find it works up a little bit on the lighter side of a worsted weight. Uh, so your gauge might be different if you're using uh, something um, such as a Vanna's Choice or a thicker worsted weight yarn. For the blanket you're going to need four colors. I've used this dark navy blue, country blue, a medium country blue. Here is my color B, so this is the darker one is my color A. I've used a gray as my color C and then just an off white as my color D. You're going to need approximately four balls of that color A if you're using this uh, blue Karen Simply Soft, each ball has about 315 yards. You're going to need three of the blue, uh, four of the gray simply because the Karen Simply Soft Heathers has a little bit less yarn in it. Um, so uh, if you are substituting it for something different you're going to need about 900 yards in total of your B and your C and your D colors. Now your A color you're going to need a little bit more which is why um, I included 120 or sorry um, 1200 yards simply because I used it also in my edging okay and joining together. So that's, uh, that's the materials you're going to need. So nine, approximately 900 yards of both uh, your color B, C, and D, and about 1,200 yards of your color A. You're also going to need a six millimeter crochet hook, as well as a pair of scissors and a yarn needle for weaving in your ends. Uh, that You can find a co written copy of the pattern on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com and I will have the link, direct link available for you in the notes of this video, as well as information about the yarn and the hook that I'm using as well. So thank you so much for joining me and uh, we're just going to get our materials together and I'm going to show you how to crochet this gorgeous Changing Tides throw. If you are new to my channel or you haven't yet already, I'd like to invite you to subscribe. Uh, I like to update this channel weekly with uh, free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. So I'd love it if you did. And uh, be sure to hit that little bell if you'd like to receive notifications for when I post. So our blanket pattern today, as I mentioned, it is made up of 12 different blocks are 12 this of the same blocks but they're 12 blocks that are then crocheted together these blocks are worked in rows so we're going to start by making our slip knot and you're then going to begin with a starting foundation chain of 49 
chains. There's 10. Twenty, thirty, forty. So 49 chains for your foundation chain. You're then going to double crochet into the fourth chain from your hook. So count in one, two, three, four. Into that fourth chain, you're going to work one double crochet stitch. Your chain three at the beginning of each round or uh, each row does count as a double crochet. You're then going to double crochet into each stitch all the way across. So double crochet in the fourth chain from hook and then double crochet in each stitch all the way across. At the end of this row, including your turning chain, you're going to have a total of 47 stitches. At the end of your row one, you're going to chain one and turn your work. You're going to continue working with your color A at this time. And you're going to start by your row two. You're going to start by single crocheting into that first stitch. Your chain one does not count as a stitch. So single crochet into that first stitch and into each stitch all the way across. After, once you get into the textured stitches, after each row of your double crochet stitches, you're going to work this return single crochet row. So single crochet in each stitch all the way across, remembering to single crochet into the top of your chain three, because it counts as a stitch, you will have a total of 47 stitches. Now I'm just coming up on the end of my row two. At the end of your row two, you are going to change to your color B. So the way I like to change my colors, and this works if you're adding a new ball of yarn or anything at all um, to change colors. What you do is in the top of my chain three here, because I'm treating it as a stitch with my color A, I insert my hook into the top of that turning chain. I yarn over and draw up a loop. Now because I'm working a single crochet stitch, I'm then going to drop my color A. I'm going to pick up my color B and place it on my hook. I'm then going to complete my stitch using that color B. So now when I turn my work, I'm all set to go with my color B in hand. Now at this time, it's up to you as far as your own personal preference. You can clip off your color A and weave in your ends, or you're welcome to carry it up the side. As long as you don't pull it too tight or leave it too loose, you want it just to lay comfortably up the side because we are going to be working and edging around these squares. It will cover it, um, but it's really up to you and your own personal preference. At this time, I'm going to just leave it as is, and I'm going to gently carry them up the side. So once you have your color B attached, you're going to chain three and turn your work. We're now going to start working some of that texture. So what we're going to do is we're going to work some front post double crochet stitches. 
And we're going to be working around the posts of the double crochet stitches that are two rows below. So I have my chain three, which counts as a double crochet stitch. My next stitch is a front post double crochet. So I'm going to skip that first chain three, that first double crochet stitch, and then around the post of the next stitch, two rows below, I'm going to work a front post double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, bring my hook in front of my work, insert my hook around the post from right through to left, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. That's my front post double crochet stitch. I'm now going to work a double crochet into the next stitch. I'm going to, if you look at the top, so if I look at the top of my work, I have this double crochet, I have this front post double crochet, which is worked in the stitch below the next. So I'm going to skip that next one up top and work a double crochet into the next stitch up top. Like so. I then want to repeat with a front post double crochet. Each time I'm going to skip one stitch in between. So down here on my post stitches, I skip the, uh, the double crochets, I skip the next one, and then around the next, work a front post double crochet stitch. Next, I want a double crochet worked in the top, but I want to skip again one stitch in between up top. So I have my double crochet in the top, I have a front post, so I'm going to skip that one, and then into the next one, work a double crochet stitch. So you will always up top, when you work a double crochet into the top of your stitches, you will always skip one stitch in between. Down below in front, you will always skip one stitch in between your front post double crochet stitches. So you're going to repeat all the way across. Skip the next double, then work a front post double crochet around the next two rows below. Up top, skip the next single crochet, and then into the next single crochet, work a double crochet. Continue that all the way across, and when you get to your final stitch, you're going to simply work a double crochet into that final stitch. At the end of row three, this is what your work will look like so far. At the end of row three, you're going to chain one and turn your work. You're now working your return row and we're going to work one single crochet in each stitch all the way across. At the end of row four, you are going to want to change to your color C. So once again, using your color B, insert your hook, yarn over, drop a loop. Uh, you're going to drop your color B, pick up your color C, place it on your hook, and pull through. You're then going to chain three and turn your work. Now for row five, we want to continue working our front post and double crochet stitches, but we want to alternate them so that they're worked in between one another. So what you're going to do this time for row five is you have your chain three coming out of your first stitch, that counts as a double crochet, then into the next single crochet, work another double crochet stitch. Then skip the next single crochet, but working in the double crochet down below, work one front post, double crochet stitch, then up top into the next single crochet, work a double crochet stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way across. Skip the next single crochet, but working in that double crochet down below, work a front post double crochet stitch, and then double crochet 
in the next single crochet up top. So you're going to continue that all the way across. When you reach your final two single crochet stitches, you're going to simply work a double crochet into the, both of those single crochet stitches. I'll pull back here so you can see. So you can see you have your front posts going into those double crochets in between the front posts down below. At the end of row five, you're going to chain one and turn your work. And for row six, you're going to continue working with that color C and single crochet in each stitch all the way across. At the end of this row, you'll remember to switch to your color D. For row seven, you're going to chain three using your color D and turn your work. You're now going to work a row just like your row three down here. So you're going to start, you're going to skip that first single crochet and skip the next, but into the double crochet down below, work a front post double crochet stitch double crochet into the next single crochet up top, skip the next single crochet but into the double crochet down below work a front post double crochet. So continue that all the way across. At the end of row seven, you're going to chain one and turn your work. You're then going to work your return single crochet row, so a single row crochet in each stitch all the way across. And then at the end of this row, you're going to switch back to your color C. So single crochet in each stitch all the way across and switch back to your color C. So at the end of that row eight, you're switching back to your color C. If you have left it, you're just going to bring it uh, and haven't fastened off, you're just going to bring it just gently up the side there. You're then going to chain three for row nine and turn your work. We're going to now work some more of our textured stitches. You're going to work a double crochet, uh, skip the first single, uh, single crochet and work a double crochet into the next single crochet stitch. Skip the next single crochet but in the double crochet down below, work a front post, double crochet, and up top, work a double crochet in the next stitch. Continue that all the way across in your color C. At the end of row nine, you've worked a double crochet in each of the last two stitches. You're going to chain one and turn your work. You're then going to work a single crochet stitch into each stitch all the way across. At the end of this row, you are going to switch back to your color B. So single crochet in each stitch all the way across and at the end of the row, switch to your color B. With your color B on your hook, you're going to chain three and turn your work. Now for row 11, you're going to uh, start by skipping that first 
single crochet and the next but in the double crochet down below work a front post double crochet stitch then double crochet in the next single crochet up top skip the next single crochet but in the double crochet down below work a front post double crochet and then single crochet in the next or double crochet in the next single crochet you're going to continue that all the way across for your row nine sorry we're on row 11 At the end of row 11, you're going to chain one and turn your work. You're then going to work a single crochet stitch into each stitch all the way across. And then at the end of this row, your row 12, you're going to switch back to your color A. So single crochet in each stitch all the way across and switch back to your color A. Now with color A back on your hook for row 13, you're going to chain three and turn your work. You're then going to double crochet into the next stitch. Skip the next single crochet and in the double crochet down below, work a front post double crochet stitch double crochet in the next stitch, skip the next single crochet, and then the double crochet down below, work a front post double crochet, and then double crochet in the next single crochet. So you're going to continue this all the way across. Now at the end of row 13, this is what your work is going to look like. And from here on out, the block uh, is a repetition. The next rows are just a repeat of rows two through to 13. So beginning with this return single crochet row all the way up to the row that we just worked. For the rest of your block, you are going to repeat those rows two through to 13 three more times. So at the end, by the time you're finished your block, you're going to see three white uh, stripes, such as the one that you see here or whatever color uh, your color D is. You're going to see three of those and you're going to end with your color A and then at that point you know that you're finished your block. So you're going to go ahead and finish working your blocks. You're going to work a total of 12 of them. And then at uh, the end of the first block or at the end of the 12, uh, you can meet me back here and I'm going to go ahead and finish this block and then we're going to work the edging of our blocks. Each block has uh, just a simple single crochet edging. So I'm going to go over that with you once you have completed your block. So go ahead, repeat rows 2 through to 13 three more times and I'll see you back here when you're finished. Now, once your block is finished and once you have woven in all of your ends, you're going to want to, before we join our blocks together, uh, do a quick edging around the block. For my edging, I did a simple two rounds of single crochet stitches. So you're going to take your yarn and then into the top right corners that will uh, possibly be your chain three really into any corner you're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch you're then going to single crochet into each stitch all the way across the top 
when you come to your corner, you're going to work three single crochet stitches into your corner stitch. So go ahead, single crochet in each stitch all the way across the top and uh, work three in your corner. So I'm just working my three stitches into my corner stitch here and that's going to bring you around to the rough side of your block, which looks like this. You're now going to work evenly 59 single crochet stitches down. Now you can change the number of stitches that you work along this rough edge. Just remember uh, how many you do work along the first one because you're going to want to have the same number of stitches along that rough side on each of your blocks okay so I'm going to uh, single crochet 59 stitches evenly across and uh, then when you come back to your corner once again work three single crochets into your corner then you're going to repeat what you did here up at the top you're going to single crochet in each stitch across on the opposite side, you're going to work another 59 uh, single crochet stitches. And then you're going to, when you come back to your final corner, work uh, two final single crochet stitches in that corner and then join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. So go ahead and work that first round of block edging, uh, single 59 single crochets, chain three in each corner, single crochet across the bottom and then another 59 up the side followed by two single crochet stitches in that final corner okay so work that all the way around and then meet me back here and we will do round two of the block edging so i am just joining with a slip stitch now in my first stitch and I have one round of single crochet edging completed. Now what you're going to do is you're going to do another round of single crochets. So start by chaining one. There's no need to turn your work. You're going to single crochet into that first stitch and in each stitch across. In each corner stitch you're going to single crochet three, then single crochet across then uh, again at each corner single crochet three all the way back to that beginning stitch where you will single crochet two and then join with a slip stitch in the top of that stitch. You're going to do that for all 12 of your blocks. So two round of single crochet edging around all 12 of your blocks and then you will be ready to join your blocks together. So this is where it starts to get a little bit exciting. Um, we will join them together. And once I finish my blocks here, I will show you how I like to join them. And uh, there are many ways that you can join blocks together, but I'll show you the technique that I've used in, uh, in the blanket that's being done here in this tutorial. So go ahead, work your single crochet edging on all 12 of your panels, uh, and then meet me back here, and we will join them together. Now, once you have all of the edging worked around uh, your blocks, you're going to want to begin joining your panels together. Now, you're blocks are going to lie side by side and I laid them out so that uh, there were three together by four together that's how I laid out my blanket and what you're going to want to do is when you piece them together especially the blocks that are um, side by side with your stripes you're going to want to make sure that they line up so some of them you may have to actually flip them around like I'm going to do with this one just so that your stripes do line up and it won't look uh, wonky or anything for lack of a better word um, when you go to look at your blankets they're going to be nice smooth clean lines then you're going to lay them side by side and for my join I worked
worked in the back loop only through both thicknesses and I simply worked a slip stitch. I'm going to show you that here on this one. What I did was I joined my yarn in the corner. So again, working through the back loop only, find your corner stitch and insert your hook on one block. Then in the corresponding back loop only of the other one, you're also going to insert your stitch insert your hook. So you're going to be working with your wrong sides together like this. You're then going to join your yarn with a slip stitch like so. Next you're going to continue working slip stitches all the way across continuing to work in the back loop only of each side. So on my stitch and the back loop only, back loop is always that loop that is the furthest away from you, okay? Uh, closest to the wrong side. So insert your hook under the back loop only of the next stitch, the back loop only of the other on the other side of the panel, yarn over and slip stitch. You're going to continue that all the way across and I worked my long rows first and then I went back and I slip stitch joined my short rows. Okay, so you're going to do that all the way across your panels. They're all going to face in the same direction and so all of your stitches should line up perfectly. Just make sure that you're not skipping any stitches in between. So continue that along all the rows, lining up the lines of color in your blocks and uh, lining up the panels with one another and working through both thicknesses and the back loops only of both of those pieces and uh, slip stitch all the way across. When you are finished, I will show you, I have a little bit worked here already. You're going to have a seam that looks like this on the top. It's going to lay almost flat when your work is finished. And this is what the back will look like. It's just a very smooth join. And I think rather nice for this blanket. So go ahead and uh, work those slip stitch in the back loop only, both thicknesses join, and uh, then come back and we're going to just work a simple edging around the entirety of our blanket together. Okay, so you will have now, you've worked your 12 uh, blocks, you've worked single crochet edging around each one, and you have joined your pieces together. You can now go ahead and weave in any tails or ends that may be sticking out there. But now we're going to work an edging around the entire blanket. Again, here's a place where you can be creative and uh, add a favorite edging of your choice. Because there is so much texture in the blanket, I just decided to do a simple half double crochet edging. Actually just three rounds of half double crochets around the entire blanket, just to kind of set the texture off in this uh, blocks a little bit more. Again, you can use whichever color you would like. I'm going to continue using my navy blue and what you're going to do is you're going to join your yarn in the top right hand corner with the right side facing you and you can join your yarn with a slip stitch and then you're simply going to work one half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. When you come to each corner, you're going to work three half double, sorry, I made a single crochet there. You're going to work three half double crochet stitches into each corner stitch. So work one half double crochet into each stitch all the way across, 
three in the corner stitch and then continue on like that all the way around. When you come back to your first stitch, you are going to join with a slip stitch. You're not going to chain your work. You're going to continue working in the same direction and uh, work again another round of half double crochets. You're going to do a total of three rounds of half double crochet stitches. Join with a slip stitch in that top stitch and uh, fasten off. Weave in any final ends that you might have hanging out and that's all there is uh, to working your rip tides afghan. So thank you so much for joining me on this video tutorial. I would love to see photos of your finished work and you can share those with me either by tagging Rich Textures Crochet on Instagram uh, or Facebook or other social media or you can join the Rich Textures Crochet community on Facebook and you can share your photos there as well. So until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.